What's up, guys? Welcome back to News Wave. Yesterday, it was pretty busy, actually, with news all over the place. We're going to be going over all of that here today, of course, but we had another game pop up that's been rated for the Switch. Actually, a couple of games in a collection that'll probably get some people pretty excited to see show up on the Switch. Also, we had some games delayed, one of which, yeah, I was pretty sad to see the other one. I was like, okay, sure, it's delayed. Uh, all right, uh, and then we also have to talk a bit about a Smash Direct to look forward to tomorrow and some of the popular theories going uh, around right now online as to who that fifth character could be. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. It helps out a lot. You guys have been doing that, like I said, the past uh, couple of weeks now, and it has really been helping the video, so I do appreciate it. And if you're brand new here, make sure you subscribe down below with the bell icon on so you can keep up to date with all of the gaming news going on in the gaming world as we roll towards 400,000 subscribers. Today, we're going to start with Resident Evil 3. I got the star shirt on because yesterday we had an awesome trailer. It was a big time look at Nemesis and wow, that's going to be something. Having to deal with Nemesis is going to be crazy in this game. They keep showing the visuals and man, that RE engine is something else, isn't it? Like you, you really look through that trailer and it looks like what we figured would would, uh, would be cinematics back in the day. And we were like, wow, this, this looks incredible. And then it would shift over, of course, to the actual visuals on like the PS2. We're like, okay, we're back to normal. No, now we're, now we're talking like those kind of visuals in game. And man, some of this stuff looks crazy with Nemesis. Of course, he's a bit faster than uh, than Mr. X will say from uh, from Resident Evil 2 that we were dealing with. No, no, Nemesis means business. He's busting up through roofs. He's got a flamethrower. He's got a rocket launcher. And that trailer really showed what we're going to be dealing with on April 3rd. I was really excited to see that. We all saw a trailer for Doom Eternal that looks amazing as well. So man, that's going to be going from the end of March, which Doom and Animal Crossing on the same day, that'll be an interesting pair to go back and forth between. Although you have to also consider what's scarier, demons or Tom Nook holding up your mortgage asking for that payment. Also, do you remember that game that looked very similar to Breath of the Wild, Genshin Impact? Remember it was coming out on the PC and cell phones and then they announced it for the PlayStation 4. It was supposed to be coming out in 2020, which obviously this year, but we haven't really heard a date of any kind. And now they're saying it's coming to the Switch as well, which I mean, okay, it looks, it, yes, it looks similar to Breath of the Wild. We talked about it, you got the climbing mechanics that has a stamina bar and it has similar art styles and the idea of the open world. But I mean, that's, they're not using any of the likenesses. Like, it, like there's no title, you know, Legend of Zelda in there. The character models aren't the same. So they, I'm sure can technically do this, but it got to the point where someone smashed a PlayStation 4 over this, if you remember, it infamously tweeted out and went viral online. But Hey, apparently it's also coming to the Switch now, which kind of makes sense considering you have that audience that's already enjoying Breath of the Wild. They might see that and say, wow, it looks similar. Okay, I, I'll try this too. It's, it's, it's a strategy, but I will point out that the reason a lot of people talked about that game in the first place is because it fell into controversy that it looked like Breath of the Wild, not because the game itself looked that interesting, although it doesn't necessarily look bad if you look at it, it just, it's not something that's, that would have jumped out to me otherwise. Oh, and do you remember that back button attachment that's coming out for the PlayStation 4 controller? Well, that's actually due out next week on the 23rd for a retail price of $29.99, and some reviews actually went up yesterday, and for the most part, everyone said it was pretty good. Now, this would be a way that you can get those macro buttons on the back of your PlayStation 4 controller, your first party controller, without having to look around at other brands. Astro, for example, makes that C40 that's $200. You have the scuff controllers that are about the same. Those have more functionality to them technically, but a lot of people really like the idea of having some sort of paddles on the back like the Xbox One Elite controller. Well, this would let that happen to your controller for $30. And for the most part, people were pretty happy with it. It was it was straightforward. I mean, it's basically two macro buttons that go on the back with, an, with a screen. The screen to me might be a bit of overkill, but I mean, it's kind of neat to have that on the back. I'm going to get it here. We'll check it out. I'm curious about how it's built inside. For the most part, reviews pointed out that it felt solid, but cheaper, we'll say, than some of the other buttons, specifically the shoulder and, and the triggers on the PlayStation 4 controller. But it's a pretty cool alternative to having to shop around for a more expensive custom controller for the PlayStation 4. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's talk about, about two delays from Square, one of which is Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game that I am really looking forward to because I love Final Fantasy VII. I was really happy to see the remake finally get announced. 
technically with a trailer back in 2015. It's been a while, okay? <laughs> We've been waiting a bit to have this game out. Even longer if you go past that one where it was rumored and talked about, we had a tech demo, but it was officially unveiled as happening at 2015 E3. So it, it's been a bit, right? Now we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. They put this out on Twitter. Remember, originally it was supposed to come out March 3rd. So we were getting pretty close, right? Like we, were, we were getting there, but they put this out saying that it was gonna be coming out now April 10th. It's been pushed back uh, about five-ish weeks, five and a half weeks now, basically a month and then a week has been pushed back. And their reasoning, as they state here with, uh, with the image that they put out saying, we are making this tough decision in order to give ourselves a few extra weeks to apply final polish to the game and to deliver you with the best possible experience. I, on behalf of the whole team, want to apologize to everyone, as I know this means waiting for the game just a little bit longer. Thank you for your patience and continued support. So, yeah, we gotta wait a bit longer. Now, there, there's gonna be a day one patch no matter what. In fact, that could be part of what they are refining. I'm hoping that this just means the game will be a bit better. Specifically, glitches, bugs. Look, I don't mind having to wait longer for a game if it's going to be better out of the gate. That's fine. I'd rather wait a bit longer for it to come out than it come out a bit too early, have all kinds of possibly game-breaking bugs and just ruin the experience, and then I have to wait for a patch anyway, right? That's what I think all of us would prefer. There's a lot of stuff coming out anyway, right? Like, like March already has some stuff in it that we're gonna be enjoying and playing. I would have liked to have kicked off March with this game, but waiting until April 10th, yeah, that's gonna be a bit harder because there is a lot of stuff coming out around it. There's of course Trials of Mana coming out in April, and then we know a week before Final Fantasy drops, we'll be dealing with Resident Evil 3, we just talked about that, and then uh, not even a week after Final Fantasy 7 drops, Cyberpunk is out. So we have several games in a row, back to back to back to back, and then again at the end of March on the 20th, we'll have Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing dropping. So I kind of would have preferred for it to come out in March at the beginning, like the beginning, so we get that out of the way. I mean, not get out of the way, but we have two weeks or so to really play that game without it being potentially crowded by games around it. I understand the game may have needed this, but it still is a bit uh, a bit frustrating, and some people will probably have to pick or, pick and choose. Cyberpunk, people have been waiting for that even longer than Final Fantasy VII Remake because that was unveiled for what felt like forever ago. Remember their Twitter handle went like completely silent for years until it woke up and then we got to see Cyberpunk. So I get why some people might say, you know, I wanted Final Fantasy VII Remake, but I'm gonna buy one game this month, and you know what, it's gonna be Cyberpunk. You might get the same thing with Resident Evil 3. So I get that either way. But the one good thing is, though there, we think there's a demo coming out soon, right? Like we've, we've heard it, we heard about the demo, uh, like what, at the end of December? It's, it's been a bit and we were hoping we would at least get some word about it by now, but at least they could probably drop that demo soon-ish in the coming weeks. And then we'll have something to hold our, ourselves over and kind of, I would say, dig into heavily to see what the combat system is, visually how it looks and actually get, a, again, the conversation going, actually playing this game even though it's just in demo form, but still, gotta wait a little longer, month and a week or so, and then we can finally play the first installment, remember, first installment of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, and the other game that was delayed was The Avengers. It was gonna be coming out May 15th. It's now coming out September 4th, and I gotta be honest, I'm not shocked that this game was getting delayed. I don't think this game looks very good. Like, I don't, I, I mean, they showed, of course, the people playing the different characters, and it's been joked that they're like the stunt doubles. I don't even think the gameplay looked that good, and I get why it's being delayed for so long, right? I mean, we're talking about, what, a, a four-month delay here? That's, that's a bit of time, and hopefully they can get some stuff worked out. This is supposed to be a games-as-a-service thing. It's... Mm, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in, in that one, but uh, looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we'll see if the Avengers resurfaces closer to launch and maybe it looks different, but uh, I'm not holding my breath for that one. Next up, let's talk about some different ports that appear to be making their way to the Switch. Remember, we talked about Metro Redux as that has been rated. That is the combination of Metro 2033, and then we have Metro Last Light, both kind of packed together under Metro Redux. It's already on the other platforms, but having it moved to the Switch will be pretty interesting. That's a, pretty, that's a graphically intensive game on the other platforms, so it'll be fun to see how it holds up on what's a portable device, right, with the Switch. It is hard to believe that a game like Metro 2033, which brought video cards to their knees during uh, the, when tessellation was starting to pop up, it's gonna be on like a portable device. It's gonna be interesting to see that. But a few other games we have now, 
appear to be the Bioshock collection. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool to see because I've been hoping that Bioshock would eventually make its way to the Switch. Even the, like the older ones, right? Just to have those brought over would be pretty cool. Well, here are some ratings and this is from the Taiwanese ratings board and we have a couple of them here. We have Bioshock Remastered, Bioshock 2 Remastered, Bioshock Infinite, the complete edition, and Bioshock the collection. So nothing has been officially confirmed, obviously, but I think we're all waiting for a direct to take place in the next week or two at this point, end of January, beginning of February, there will probably be a direct to set up the rest or at least most of the year. I would say probably the next six to seven months will be set up. I would like for them to tell us what the holiday game is. I think that'd be good to get that ball rolling. We believe it's Breath of the Wild 2, but seeing some of these different ports show up is part of the direct. Generally, they will have some third-party ports dropped in there and they, you know, we, we saw deadly premonition out of nowhere, you know, like what? Witcher 3, of course, was another one. Metro Redux will be pretty cool to see. And of course, the Bioshock collection, those have been rated, so those appear to be heading our way. And then the other one is Saints Row 4. I mean, we saw Saints Row 3, but at this point, we've seen it listed by retailers. Nate, Direct Feed Games, has actually pretty much confirmed it, and yeah, I, I've heard of this too. So Saints Row 4 appears to be another one heading to the Switch, which, I mean, why not? I mean, if they can get it running better than 3, that which would be nice, uh, but there's no Grand Theft Auto on the Switch yet, so really, why not? You know, bring Saints Row over. THQ Nordic seems to like the Switch so far, so yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. But look out for some of those most likely announced in the upcoming Direct, and you're gonna probably see some other third-party ports as well. But again, Metro Redux, which is a game that is pretty taxing on systems, working on the Switch alongside Witcher 3, it really shows you anything's technically possible on the Switch. So keep that in mind going into the next Direct. Next up, let's talk about the fifth Smash Fighter in the Fighter's Pass. We figured this was coming as they were gonna have to release it, at least according to the, them, Nintendo, by the end of February or by February, and that's that's soon, right? So they did put this up. You can see this here. It's from Nintendo Versus saying, join Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Director uh, Masahiro Sakurai on January 16th at 6 a.m. Pacific time for a roughly 35 minute video live stream featuring an in-depth look at an upcoming DLC fighter, which he will unveil in the video. No, no doubt using several controllers at once because Sakurai is just really good at that, <laughs> playing uh, as multiple fighters with with either hand with two different controllers on his desk. It's pretty crazy to see that actually, which an in-depth look of 35 minutes with one character means yes, you will get a very in-depth look if any of the other presentations have been any indicator of that. So now the question is at 6 a.m. Pacific time, who will be unveiled? Also, that's fairly early for the West Coast. So that's, a sh that's a shame. But hey, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time, I'll be checking it out. Uh, I'm not the biggest Smash Bros. fan uh, now. I was back during the 64 and during Melee on the GameCube. I just fell out of it. I still play it from time to time. I do like seeing the characters. The characters are fun to see unveiled, but who? Who is gonna be uh, the character unveiled? Well, there's some theories. One, it's always brought up. It's always Sora. Sora is always brought up from Kingdom Hearts. And of course you can see Sakurai holding his, uh, his one hand sideways with a three, three fingers up. And people are saying, oh, that looks like a heart for his uh, thumb and his, and his uh, pinky finger, I guess. And then he has uh, the three, that must be Kingdom Hearts. The other theory is of course, Dante. We've talked about this before from Devil May Cry. That's possible because Capcom seemed to, to literally date January 16th, which we'll see what they have to unveil there. And we'll talk about it here on Friday, along with the fighter that's unveiled, but few things I would look for. Okay. Let's say, uh, I'm going to go with something that's a bit against the grain, I guess. Let's say, we'll say Travis touchdown. How about that from no more heroes? That would be an interesting one to see thrown in there, or maybe they're not necessarily done with Xenoblade just yet. And you get someone like Rex, from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. That's not a bad idea to throw, throw uh, Rex in there as a main character, but hey, let me know who you think is gonna be unveiled there uh, tomorrow. It's gonna be interesting to see what we get there. And then how are they gonna go forward? Are we just gonna say, hey, there's another character coming. We don't have like a defined pass or anything because they'll probably talk about that at the end as well. If there will be another defined fighter's pass of two or three more characters. So a lot of stuff to go over in the 35 minute presentation, but 
Let me know who you think will be there. And in our last bit of news, let's talk a little bit about the Nintendo 64 because there's a pretty cool discovery that was made that even shows us possibly the origins of the Dreamcast VMU. Now I will say there seems to be some assuming, some theorizing here on if that is the case, trying to make a connection, but it does, it does seem very, very possible. So when you're playing, of course, the, the Dreamcast and you have the VMU, people like the idea of that second screen. But what if I told you it actually almost existed on the Nintendo 64, so much so it was in a gaming magazine back then before the VMU was created. Yeah, check this out. This is really cool. It was a long Twitter thread, a ton of pictures in there. I'll also link it in the sources below, but let's go through some of these images here as we go over what we're seeing. So Shane on Twitter had a ton of stuff to go over here for the secret screen peripheral that was going to be designed for the Nintendo 64. Now there was an actual prototype and it even went up on eBay before being pulled down. I believe it went up on eBay for about uh, $5,000 dollars a starting bid and then ten thousand dollars of buy it now now this does not appear to have been necessarily created by nintendo themselves more or less it was a prototype that was created by dane galden talking about the inspiration being of course to avoid screen looking maybe you're playing Madden and someone's looking at your, your play calling right you can have it on a screen instead of on the the tv that actually makes sense because I use that with NFL 2K1. In fact, it was in EGM magazine and because it was on the same page apparently as uh, a Sega article, they had seen this and took inspiration from it to create that VMU. At least that's what it appears is being theorized or assumed, I guess, by, uh, by Shane or Dane Golden here. That, I guess, could make some sense. It is an, it is an interesting idea to have a second screen on your controller and to have it attached to Nintendo 64 and what it does is it plugs into that bottom port that you would use for your rumble pack and then it has a screen that you can use and they had a bunch of different ideas whether it was the most I mean, the most obvious one is probably calling your plays, right, in something like Madden or, or anything else there. They also had different ideas, whether it was uh, a HUD that you would have some information you don't want somebody next to you to see on the TV screen if you're going against each other, right? That would make sense. Or if you're playing like a card game or a board game and you have different cards or pieces that you yourself are supposed to see but not them, kind of defeats the purpose. If it's on the TV, then they can see it. What a cool idea, of course. It's something we saw kind of carried over into the Dreamcast. And we all know last generation Nintendo did eventually use a second screen in the Wii U. But interesting to think now that it also almost existed for the Nintendo 64. I'm curious if it got to the point where Nintendo really looked at this, why they may have shot it down. Was it because they were already on their way to the GameCube at the time? and they didn't want to bring that over, or maybe it was too costly, maybe they didn't have enough games that they would want to develop to support it, but hey, it was a cool idea at the time, obviously, because it ended up in the Dreamcast, but hey, we almost had a second screen, apparently, on the Nintendo 64. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This one is from uh, Taco Thing. Honestly, I feel Sony is just trying to pull off an edgy mystery uh, vibe, when in reality, the only thing they have planned is the release of the PS5 with tons of PS4 games, Obviously, I will. I still wouldn't have a problem with that. Well, I will tell you, Sony does have some PS5 exclusive games that will be showing up whenever they do their presentation. They're not gonna not gonna launch without something to look forward to and something launching with the PlayStation 5. We'll just say that. And yes, it will be fully backwards compatible from what we have seen. And Mark Cerny himself said with PS4 games makes sense. Makes the uh, transition time or period between generations, which we assume will be about a year to a year and a half a bit easier for people to do knowing that their library will carry over something that did not happen by the way with the ps3 to the playstation 4 but i will say there is something about the 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 mystery aspect of this marketing campaign they're doing right now because everyone is just talking right now about what's the ps5 gonna be what's it gonna look like right because we keep seeing dev kits but not anything with the retail unit how powerful is it gonna be we know a lot about the series x and we've talked about that and it's almost like it's kind of quieted down around the Series X while we wait for Microsoft to show us some games, right? Big games, that's what we're waiting for. Uh, but Sony, we still don't even know what the system looks like. So when they do eventually have that product reveal, it's gonna be big. They showed us a logo and it was massive. And it was just a PS5 logo. Like it was so expected, but it 
kind of caught the internet on fire there. So what happens when they show us the system after what's been a very quiet and I guess mysterious time for the PlayStation brand going into the PS5 reveal. And ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be here for Newswave. Enjoy this video, guys. Hit the like button, really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is that secret screen on the Nintendo 64. What do you think about that one? I think, I think it's a neat idea. It's a shame it didn't actually like turn into something that we could buy at retail and even have still to this day, because I think it was a cool idea on the Dreamcast. Also, what about this Smash Fighter? Who do you think is gonna show up? Do you think it's gonna be just like Dante? Do you think it could be Sora, or you think it could be something a bit different like Travis or maybe even Rex from Xenoblade. A lot of interesting thoughts there. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.